Hey. Hey. Welcome. Hello, I'm Susan. For the first time, Rahaf Mohammed explains why she fled her country, her family, and the repression she says she endured in Saudi Arabia. أو زي ما نقول التشبه بالرجال وهذا أيضا محرم في الإسلام لكن كنت أتعرض للعنف أكثر شيء من أمي وأخوي. From your mother and your brother, violence were they beating you? يصير في ضرب وعنف جسدي. لدرجة أن أحيانا أنزف دم. Rahaf, can you help Canadians understand what it's like to be a young woman in Saudi Arabia like you? بالنسبة لنا يعني إحنا السعوديات كنا نعامل كعبيد ما نقدر نتخذ قرارات شخصية حتى يعني في الزواج في الدراسة في الوظيفة. Once she turned 18, she plotted an escape. كنت خايفة لكن حسيت إن أنا لازم أخاطر بحياتي عشان حريتي. بس أكثر شيء خوفني إن لو لو مسكوني لو مسكوني راح أختفي ولا أعرف إيش مصيري بعدها. In early January, Rahaf Mohammed slipped away from her family, vacationing in Kuwait, intending to make it to Australia and claim asylum. But at a stopover in Bangkok, Thai officials seized her passport, detaining her in a hotel. I want asylum with you in. Terrified she would be forced back, she turned to social media, asking for intervention from the UNHCR. I'm not leaving my room until I see UNHCR. I want asylum. فبالوقت هذا كنت أفكر برسالة الوداع اللي راح أكتبها لأن ما راح أسمح لهم يأخذوني وكنت على استعداد تام إني أنهي حياتي قبل ما يخطفوني. Did you start that letter? كتبتها وأرسلتها لصديقاتي في حال إن اختفيت ينشرونها للعالم ويعرفون أنا إيش صار لي. But the UNHCR intervened and asked she be granted asylum somewhere. Canada agreed. <laughs> Tell Canadians I love them, she told us. But even here, she still faces about a hundred threats daily. ناس كثير يكرهوني سواء من أهلي أو من ناس في السعودية. Her family put out a statement disowning her, the naughty daughter with shameful behavior who embarrassed our Islamic customs and values, and begged the kingdom not to blame the family. Do you believe that this letter, this declaration, is from your family? Clearly, it cuts deeply. Blocked entirely now from her five sisters. Did you expect that? هل أنت كنت فكرة عارفة إن الموضوع ده هيحصل إنهم هيعملوا كذا؟ لا. No, she didn't expect it. Rahaf Mohammed is now both reviled and admired. Women are asking for help. She advises them not to escape. It's too risky. How do you respond to the critics who say you got special treatment? أنا حياتي كانت بخطر لكن ممكن أني كنت محظوظة أني لقيت إجابة سريعة. And for now, no regrets. Losing your family, leaving your country, that was all worth it for you. يعني في النهاية أنا اللي بعيش فمضطر أني أتخلى كل شيء عشان أعيش زي ما أنا أبي أو مين راح أكون. Such a compelling story, Susan. Clearly, uh, Mohammed's been through a lot. Did she give you a sense of what's next for her, what she imagines is next for her? Yeah, like any refugee, she's got to learn English, and she wants to study to be an engineer, but she can hardly sort of assume the quiet life of a student. In 10 days, she's become, you know, come from a unknown student, unknown person in Saudi Arabia to a global human rights crusader, and that really has made her a hero for some, and as she said, a target for others. Okay, Susan, great reporting on this throughout the weekend and again today. Thank you.